Hi friends, today we're gonna rank houseplants because why not? It'll be fun. I found this on tearmaker.com, already made, and I will leave this link to my description below in case you wanna try it yourself. There's a little over 40 plants for us to rank today, and we're going to be ranking them from the D tier, which is going to be for the poopy plants, all the way up to the S tier, which is going to be reserved for the holy grails of the plant world, or the godlike plants. And of course, this is going to be swayed by my own opinions today, which is kind of the whole fun of this video. So let's go ahead and get started. We're just gonna do them in order today. This first one is either a neon pothos or a philodendron. It's very small. I'm pretty sure it looks like it's got that heart shape. So it's probably the partly philodendron in the lemon lime form. And that's a pretty good houseplant. That was always a really popular plant that sold really well back when I worked at the houseplant store. I love mine. I have one that I mean, it was like six feet long. I think I forgot to water it for a second there, or maybe the lighting conditions changed. And now it's probably only about three feet long, but you know what? Still an excellent plant. I do think that this belongs in like the A or the B tier. I'm gonna go with A because it's got some really stellar color that stands out amongst the rest. And it just really can't be beat. It does not belong in the S tier by any means though. We have the inch plant here, the Tradescantia plant, the purple variety right here. I'm not sure if there's any other varieties. For some plants, we might be specifically talking about like this specific variety, but for others, I might like wanna kind of generalize it a little bit. We'll talk more about that if it comes up. But for the standard purple, inch plant. I'm gonna put that in the C tier. I do talk smack about this plant. It is not a very sustainable or ma maintainable, I think is the better word, house plant to grow in the home. It's going to grow really fast and easily at first, but then it's going to lose a lot of those lower leaves and become a very bald and ugly looking house plant. It's very easy to propagate and recreate the way it looked before, which is why I think it does deserve to be in the C tier rather than the D tier. I'm sure a lot of people would probably rank this one higher, but yeah, Tradescanthias, uh, I loved them in the early days of my indoor gardening career, but now that I'm a little bit more seasoned, they're just not doing it for me anymore. And we have Lucky Bamboo. <laughs> I've never actually grown a Lucky Bamboo in my home. They do have a very niche appearance, so I will give them that, but they are just like the, what you're going to find at like the drugstore in their plant section, if we can even call it that. So I'm gonna put that in the D tier, I'm so sorry. And I also think, mm, I'm gonna also put this Kalanchoe Vlasfeldiana in the D tier. It is just so unremarkable. Its leaves, its flowers, there is just really nothing to be desired with this houseplant. I do like that it's offered in a lot of different colors, like yellows, whites, reds, pinks, depending on the time of year, they might be offered like pinks and reds around Valentine's Day, for example, but still, I really don't think this plant really has anything going for it whatsoever. String of Pearls. A lot of people will probably put this in the S tier. I'm actually gonna put it in the B tier. I think it's where it truly belongs. It is a very niche houseplant, just like the Lucky Bamboo in a different way that it's a lot more popular. The waterfall of little pearls that forms as you grow this plant out as a trailing plant is really something else. But I think it belongs in the B tier because when I did work at the houseplant store, this was the number one plant that people would bring in their dead plant like a week after they bought it and just be like, I literally did nothing to this plant and it's dead. And there was really nothing I could do in that situation. So this plant has caused me <laughs> enough frustration as somebody who worked in the industry. So it's by no means belong in the S or A tier for me. B it is. Peace lilies. I do really love peace lilies. I really enjoyed peace lilies when I was in the early days of my gardening career because they reminded me to like my family trips to Florida growing up. It was like the one plant, I guess the spath flowers really like stuck out to me as a child. And I really enjoyed them and I always wanted to grow one in my home when I was growing up and my parents never let me have plants. So that's kind of probably one of the main reasons why I have hundreds of plants in my home as an adult because no one can tell me what to do. So I do think I'm gonna rank the piece lily higher than some other people might rank it, but I think I'm gonna put it in the C tier. For most people would probably put it in the D tier. I think most people just think about it as like a funeral plant, which is very understandable, but I do have a slight soft spot for it. So that's going to land it in the C tier. It's just never been like, it's never grown well for me. I've tried the small varieties, I've tried the large leaf varieties, and I've either thrown them out or given them away because they just were never growing well for me. And hopefully the people that I've given them to have found much more success with these houseplants because they really are quite lovely. And I would love to rank them a little bit higher, but just for the fact that they're like pumped with like the gibberellic acid in the nursery so that they're full of flowers and then it's kind of hard to get them to flower because they're just like completely spent at that point. So. Yeah, I think they belong in the C tier. Aloe vera, is it the most exciting houseplant on planet Earth? Absolutely not. Should everyone have one in their home? Yes. I will never forget when I literally 
I don't know how, I was not being the smartest person. I had a shirt on, but I was cooking with boiling water and a bunch of boiling water splashed onto my tummy a couple years ago. All red, all sore, and I just immediately, like as soon as it happened, just turn around and cut off a arm, a leaf, whatever we call it, of the aloe vera plant that I had in my kitchen. I rubbed it all over my body and like an hour later, I was lying on the couch, my roommate was near me and she was like, holy crap, your burn is gone. Granted, was it completely gone? No, there was a little bit left, but I'm, a true believer that the aloe vera like saved me that day. So I'm gonna rank this as an A tier plant. I think it truly deserves it. In terms of aesthetics, does this belong a little bit lower? Yeah, but this plant just has a place in my heart. Also, aloe vera was the first plant I ever actually acquired. A friend and neighbor of mine in college, she came to my apartment for the first time and she was like, you don't have any houseplants? I'm giving you one of my aloe vera babies. And I still actually have that aloe vera to this day. I think I might've gotten rid of most of it and like kept a baby. So technically I have an, uh, a, a child or a grandchild of that aloe vera, but still, I think that counts. Calathea lancifolia or Gypertia insignis for being that type of person. This or the rattlesnake plant, some people call it, is one of the most beautiful plants I have ever seen in my entire life. This is the prayer plant that I got got by when I was in my wee stages of my indoor gardening career. The foliage pattern, the foliage shape, the way that it dances throughout the day up and down, the way that it has the purple on the underside. It is just the it prayer plant for me. I know a lot of people are probably a little bit more into like the pinstripe prayer plant or like the peacock prayer plant maybe, but no, the rattlesnake plant is my prayer plant. Have I ever successfully grown it? Not one time. I've probably tried like four or five different specimens of Calathea lancifolia at this point. I don't think I've ever gotten an actual nice leaf to grow on the plant, but I know people who have, which, <laughs> gives me a little bit of hope, I will admit, but from my experience, I don't think it's ever, I mean, maybe one day, but I just, it doesn't seem like it's in the cards for me. So for that reason, I'm going to rank this as a B tier plant because it's just so beautiful and just so stunning, but it's just, it's never gonna work out for me. And I know when to call it quits, and I think it's time to call it quits on the Calathea lancifolia. Marble Queen Pothos. This is a really stunning houseplant. I think it's pretty wild that this can hold such a high variegation, and it seems decently stable, and it really doesn't require, like, all that much sunlight. Like, I've grown these in medium light conditions, and they still hold on to that coloration pretty fantastically. So I'm gonna rank this as an A-tier plant. I'm doing that and I'm like, maybe it's a B tier. We haven't put anything in the S tier yet. And to be honest, I'm like, is there anything on this common house pant list that I'm gonna put in the S tier? Honestly, maybe, we will see. I do think it belongs in the A tier. It's never gonna disappoint. I feel like the only people who are gonna be like disappointed by a Marble Queen Pothos are like hardcore aeroid addicts and they are never going to be pleased, so. That's fine. Ludicia Discolor, the Jewel Orchid. This is a really good house plant. Actually, I know I was just saying I haven't put anything S tier yet, but I do really think this might belong in the S tier. Jewel Orchids are slept on. I actually don't have one in my home currently. I did grow one for about two years and I loved it. It grew fantastically. I'm actually not sure what was the, the demise of that house plant. It was probably my neglect if I'm being honest because that's typically why most of my houseplants meet their demise. But I got such joy out of growing this houseplant. It has such beautiful foliage patterns. The undersides of the leaves, just like the uh, Calathea lancifolia, do have some like darker purple tones and there's so many varieties of jewel orchids that keeps it so exciting. So if we're not talking about this one variety, sorry, I don't know why my computer is so touchy today. It keeps going up and down. The specific variety of this is neither here nor there. If I'm thinking of jewel orchids as a specific like look of jewel orchids, because I do see that there's another jewel orchid on this list, so we will get there. But these dark leaved jewel orchids for me, I do think they belong in the S tier, especially compared to everything else on this list. Maybe we'll end up moving it down. We still have like 30 more plants to go through, so let's just take it plant by plant. Purple passion plant. Is that what it's called? It's not purple passion flower. No, that's not it. Purple passion plant. I want to put it in the S tier because I've seen like bad translations of this plant referring it to it as erotic, which I think is hilarious because there's not a redeemable quality about this plant whatsoever. I don't know if it's got like aphrodisiac properties to it. That's funny to me. I have some fond memories of this plant back when I worked at the house plant nursery because it has a flower that smells terrible. Like it smells like dirty feet mixed with like bad Cheetos or like cheese Doritos, which I personally can't still stand the smell of. Maybe you do, which good on you, but it smells bad. And I used to love telling people to smell the flower. <laughs> 
and sounding like it smelled good and then making them smell it and then it smelled terrible. And usually they got a laugh out of it. <laughs> Not always, but I always got a laugh out of it. Let's put it that way. So uh, that makes me want to rank it higher than it deserves because admittedly, besides that, I would probably put it in the D tier, D tier. But because of that just small fun fact, I'm going to move it up to the C tier because fond memories. Good plant? No. It is a terrible house plant in my personal opinion. It is beautiful. I love the vining appearance to it. I love the purple hue that it has. It's just, is it maintainable in the home? No, this thing dies like quicker than anything else. So it's, it's not, it doesn't have redeemable qualities other than its fun purple tinges and its smelly foot flower and its uh, poor translations on the internet. So we have the Monstera. Adansonii right here. There's so many different varieties and types of monsters that look like this, but I'm assuming we're defaulting to the Adansonii with this today. This is a really excellent houseplant. Uh, it is one that I definitely fell head over heels for when I was in my early days of indoor gardening and I just first discovered like houseplant social media. This was one of the first plants that I had never seen prior to that. And then I was like, I have to have it. And I ordered it online and yeah, it just definitely has a place in my heart. Um, you know what? I'm actually gonna put this in the S tier. I, I do think this is just such a fantastic houseplant. Like it having the holes in the leaves, but it having that like same, just standard leaf shape, like in comparison to the Monstera Deliciosa, which we're going to talk about in a couple of minutes. It's really something else. I remember when I first got one of these plants in my home, I think like my sister saw me post about it on Instagram and she texted me and she was like, you said that plant was in really good condition, but the holes are covered in leaves. Like it was totally ripped up. So I just love that. Some people just don't understand the appeal, but we do, we get it. And it's a really cool houseplant. Do I have one in my home currently? No, I do not, but I should get one. They've grown really well for me in the past, but you do forget about them a little too long and all those leaves just turn yellow and fall off and you're left with a leafless vine. And sometimes they get to that point and I just know I can start all over again. So I find solace in that and I just get rid of the plant, which is, probably why I don't have one to this day, but it being in the S tier along with the Jewel Orchid, those are two houseplants that I would love to add back into my collection as soon as I possibly can. This next one is a Calathea Beauty Star. Part of me feels like they meant to put like Calathea Ornata on this list because it's just like a tinge more common, but way more popular than the Calathea Beauty Star. So let's just pretend this is a Calathea Ornata today. And we're gonna put that right in the D tier. <laughs> it belongs there. This is the houseplant that is like, the most future garbage to me. Is it beautiful? Yes, but that is the only thing this houseplant has going for it. And you know what? In my opinion, there are so many more beautiful prayer plants out there. People just love that it has like the pink pinstripes on it, but it's just not worth it when you're probably already bringing home a plant that is covered in spider mites and is just not going to grow well for you. I don't think I've ever met a batch of Calathea Ornatas back when I worked at the houseplant stores that didn't already have pests on them. And receiving plants with pests on it when you work at a houseplant nursery is like very few and far between. It very rarely happens, but I remember I just stopped ordering them and another plant that we're gonna talk about later in this video when I worked at the nursery because it just wasn't a sustainable plant to sell because you're just infecting people's collections if you don't notice it and they buy it. And if I wasn't there on delivery day, it was probably gonna get passed over and, and people were gonna bring them home. So yeah, for that reason alone and many others, it belongs in the D tier. ZZ plant. I'm gonna put this right up in the A tier. You know, it does have some things going for it that could land it in the S tier. It is a very um, gimmicky houseplant in a way, different than like the um, the Lucky Bamboo. This is the one houseplant that I would feel comfortable selling to people back when I worked at the store. If they were like, I have no windows and no light, or like I live in a basement and all those things. This was literally the only plant I was comfortable like telling them that they are going to successfully grow it. They could bring whatever they wanted home. I would let them buy whatever they wanted, but this was the plant that I would say, this is the only one I'm telling you for a fact is going to not only survive, but grow in your home. I can't say thrive. It's not gonna thrive in low light, but it will absolutely survive and grow new leaves in low light conditions. And you barely have to water it. I used to say like on the bigger size ones, like the like eight inch, 10 inch pots, water it when you pay your rent. It's very doable that way. Smaller ones, they do need to be watered probably like every two weeks or so, but larger ones, when you make that rent payment or when that mortgage comes out, I don't, I don't know how that works. I don't own a home, but that's when you would water your ZZ plant. Tried and true. There's a lot of new varieties of the ZZ plant coming out that are um, ugly, but 
that's fine because the original still exists. The Raven's still fantastic. The black foliage, super gothic, super fun. And the fun way to really make this plant stand out in the home. How is nobody gonna notice a black plant in your home? And if you're more of like a minimalist in the way that you design or decorate your home, a black ZZ plant, chef's kiss. All right, so the next one here is the Golden Pothos. And this is going to skyrocket, skyrocket right up to the S tier. It is definitely one of the holy grails of plants in my own humble opinion. This is a plant that I passed over for years and I so regret that. If I got a Golden Pothos as one of my first few houseplants, I would have felt so good about my ability to grow houseplants. This is one of the easiest houseplants to grow. It's difficult to overwater. It's difficult to underwater. It's difficult to give it too much light. It's difficult to give it too low of light. It's really a common houseplant for a good reason. And that good reason is it's just very easy to grow. That's really it. But it's also one of the houseplants that I think is going to really help you achieve like jungle status. Its vines grow extremely quickly. It's going to probably grow around a foot a month, if not more during the growing season. So if you purchase one in like March or April, by the end of the growing season, it's probably going to be like six to eight feet long. And that's not an exaggeration. So all the more reason to try to golden pothos if you haven't already. In my earlier days of gardening, I just deemed it too common. I would see it at every single houseplant store. I would see it on like TV shows. It's just like a little houseplant sitting in the corner. And I don't know why. That just like said to me like, no, that's not it. But I learned that was my own problem and a mistake that I was making. And one of my best traits is that I always learn from my mistakes. Snake plants, Sansevieria, Dracaenas, if you wanna go that far. These are really great house plants. I got one right behind me here. This is sitting in a very low light condition and should snake plants be put in brighter light conditions to thrive? Yes, but just like the ZZ plant, they're going to survive in lower light conditions. The difference between the ZZ plant and the snake plant is that the snake plant is not going to grow in the low light conditions. It's just going to live. It's just going to be as is. What you get is what you get. And yeah, that's basically it for the snake plant. So I do really have fond feelings for this plant. There's a lot of varieties. I love my Bantel Sensation, the white variegated one, but that's not what this one is, but it's the only snake plant on this list today. So that's gonna bump it up, I think. See, in between, I feel like I'm being a little too lenient if I put it in the A tier. I do think it belongs in the B tier. I do think it's a little overrated, but it is a fantastic houseplant nonetheless. Very structural, once again, one that's perfect for if you are a minimalist in your design. But yeah, I'm like looking at the plants that it's sitting with and I'm like, honestly, I feel like I'm ranking these two a little high. Like I feel like they should be going down, but you know what? B tier is still a B. When I was in high school, I wanted A's. I didn't want B's, so B's bad. Not as bad as C and D. They're acceptable. I would accept a B. I wouldn't be upset if I got a B, but we're striving for it. We're striving for S, but B, Eh, bees, bees bee. Hoya carnosa. This is, it looks like the only Hoya on this list. Obviously I'm a little biased. I love my Hoyas. So I'm gonna put this in the A tier. If we're talking carnosa, it's A tier. Yeah, it's A tier. I was gonna say B tier, but I'm like, I'm just being harsh. So it's A tier. It's a fantastic houseplant. There are plenty more exciting Hoyas out there. I think that's the biggest beef people have with Hoyas is they think they're not very exciting. I don't feel that way. <laughs> I don't know why others feel that way. I think the foliage patterns, the succulence of it, the variegation and the speckles that they get, the way that they twine their little vines everywhere and their flowers. Are you kidding me? I love it when I don't even know I have a Hoya blooming, but I can tell when it's nighttime and I smell that smell and I'm like, oh my gosh, there's a Hoya somewhere blooming in my home and I have to go suss it out. It's always enjoyable. I have a soft spot for Hoyas, so. I'm gonna restrain myself from putting in the S tier because it's gonna go in the A tier. All right, so we have St. Paulias or African Violets next in full bloom here. They're just not exciting. <laughs> I'm sorry. Asian Violets, let's chat. African Violets, they're just not doing it for me. They're not exciting. I say they're not exciting, but that is something that, you know, could, my opinion could change on that. There are some really cool like African Violets I remember getting in stock every now and again when I worked at the houseplant store. There was like one grower in Florida who specializes in African Violets and she does do some really cool varieties, but Nothing that <laughs> got me on the African violet train. Let's put it that way. All right, Monstera Deliciosa. I do think this fully deserves A tier status. I think a couple years ago, 
it probably would have belonged in the houseplant community's eyes as the S tier. But for me, in my own opinion, I do think it is a very popular houseplant. This was the houseplant that was like very hard to get in stock back when I first got my job in like 2018 at the houseplant store, right when houseplants were starting to pick up in popularity. This was definitely one of the ones along with a couple other houseplants that were at like the top of people's list. They were the must have plants. This was way before all of the like rare houseplants, like variegated monster. This was before variegated monster. I was even really known about. I'm sure people knew about it, but you guys get what I'm saying. This was the it plant at one point before all these other plants that the error collectors are going crazy about have picked up in popularity. So rightfully placed on the A tier, I think that's exactly where it belongs. Flamingo flower, Anthurium andreanum. I wanna put it C tier. I'm between B and C. I do have a slight soft spot for these. I remember I was rescuing one that was we had at the plant store for like a year. I'm not even exaggerating. And it had white flowers and nobody wanted it. And after like a year, I was like, you know what? I'm bringing this plant home. The foliage is beautiful. And I did grow it successfully for a while. And I remember that was like the one plant that I had in the display when I would have like pictures or on Instagram or like post a story. Multiple people would ask me, what is that plant? Because it didn't have the flowers on it. And I felt like, I was like, ha ha, it's just plain anthurium when I told them, but um, yeah, I guess that's kind of how I feel too. But yeah, I do, that makes me want to move it up to B. No, but like red flamingo flower, C tier. I just have a soft spot for that white one. But if we're staying true to this tier list, it's a C tier. Ooh, this is a tough one. So five years ago, this would have gone right up to the S tier for me. Then I grew it in my home <laughs> and it would have gone down to the D tier. And then a friend of mine gave me one of them that she had been growing in her home for like a couple years. So it was like acclimated to the conditions. And then I would move it up to the B tier. Then after a couple years, that one died on me. So I'm gonna put this in the C tier. <laughs> There's a little story to go along with it. There you go. But it's a beautiful house plant, just like the uh, Calathea lancifolia. I would just say the Stromanthe, it's like, when it gets ugly, it gets ugly. Like you could probably hold on to a dying rattlesnake plant for a couple of months before you're like, all right, it's time to go. But this, once those leaves start to get like some browning on them or they start turning yellow because of how much of that white or cream variegation they have on the top sides of the leaves, they look so ugly and there's just no looking past it. So yeah, a, a plant that's danced around on my personal ranking list a lot over the past couple of years, but I'd say at this point, 2023, 2024, I guess actually is when I'm gonna be posting this video, it's going to belong on the C tier. So next we have String of Hearts. This, oh, totally, totally going on the S tier. This is like one of the houseplants, I think that when I first was doing Instagram that people were noticing on my page. Like I had my full like waterfall of string of hearts that I would post all the time on my Instagram or I talk about it on YouTube in the earlier days of my YouTube channel. And it was definitely one of the plants that I was a broken record about for a good reason. It's an incredibly beautiful house plant, the little heart shaped succulent leaves. Are you kidding me? And the fact that it's just like a trailing waterfall vine to constantly untangle it because they're constantly entwining in each other. And not to mention in today's market, there's so many fun varieties of Seropegia, the species, or I'm sorry, the genus for String of Hearts, like the Seropegia linearis, like the standard, uh, the dubilis one, the, the like the string of needles. It just looks like a bunch of like rosemary needles on a vine and super cool, super fun plant. String of Hearts alone still belongs in the S tier, forgetting about all the new varieties. Fantastic house plant. Once again, chef's kiss. So good. All right, so we have Diphambachia down here. I'm gonna put that right in the D tier. I've just never had a thing for them. This particular variety, the like snow something, I can't remember what it is, if that's even what it's called. This is probably my favorite variety of the Diphambachia, but it's still, I don't know. It's a very scary plant because of how, it's got a very bad pass, but it's, so it can go in D tier for that alone. You can do your own research there, but it uh, is the one plant, I feel like of all the aeroids that's like made you know, like your pets can't chew on this. So for that, it's always scared me when it's like, you know, Monstera has like all the same like calcium oxalates that the Diefenbachia has, but we don't think about that that way. So yeah, for that reason alone, and, and many more, as we talked about, uh, this is gonna belong in the D tier, rightfully so. Fiddly Fig, I wanna put it in the D tier so bad, but I'm gonna put it in the C tier. 
<laughs> if this is the little fiddle, D tier. Cannot stand little fiddle. Like, why did we even do that? It was a waste. We made a plant that was already hard to grow, even more difficult to grow. And we made it smaller. Fiddly fig is just very overrated. Just like the monstera was, uh, this was a very popular plant a couple years ago. And it still is a popular plant. I feel like it's definitely a favorite by designers. It's just not a favorite by indoor gardeners because we know it's not a good houseplant to grow in the home. It's gonna drop leaves too easily if you water it too much or too little. It's ficus in general are just like B tier plants, but the, the ficus lyrata, C tier, possibly even D tier. Bambino, D tier, regular C tier. Ooh, uh, Cebu Blue Pothos. I kind of want to put that in the S tier, but I'm gonna restrain myself because I think that should be reserved for the golden pothos, I think that is the S tier pothos. I think Cebu Blue Pothos possibly would have, for me, gone above golden pothos back in its heyday, but now it's a decently common houseplant, thankfully, because it's a beautiful houseplant. I'm noticing on this list here, there's no Syndapsis pictus. I will say if there was Syndapsis pictus, that would be going in the S tier hands down, but I do love the blue coloration that this has very similar to that. And it makes me want to bump it up to S tier because of that. But like I said, I really would like to give Golden Pothos its throne. It truly deserves it. A Pippinum Pinatum Cebu Blue, A tier. I think that makes total sense. All right, so we have rubber tree right here, and this is specifically the green rubber tree. I'm a little bit more fond of the green variety of the rubber tree or the ficus elastica than any other variety of ficus in existence. Still, I'm not sure if that's enough to land it in the A tier. I, I do think I'm gonna stick with my gut when I said ficus as a whole are B tier plants, so. She's going in the B tier. Spider plant, ooh, this is one that I wanna grow a spider plant successfully so bad. I want the waterfall of babies. I wanna, I suck at growing spider plants. I don't know if I just forget to water them or honestly the one that I need to get rid of right now definitely has like some thrips on it from something in the vicinity probably or it's just stressed out. It's time to replace it. It's time to get a new one. I should probably just buy a full ass hanging basket of spider plant with all the babies already and just like, hang it up in my skylight or something. I wanna put it in A tier, I've been hovering here for a couple seconds, but I am gonna put it in A tier. I think it does belong there. It is a quintessential houseplant. It is like the houseplant of the 70s. I think that alone should earn it its spot in the A tier. Everybody knows what the spider plant is. Technically the spider plant's the first houseplant I ever grow because my third grade teacher gave me a spider plant. She gave everyone in the class one of her spider plant babies, but it is obviously dead at this point, but yeah, technically my first houseplant I ever grew. Phalaenopsis orchid. Um, not exciting, not the most boring houseplant, not, I don't have anything against it, but I don't have anything going for it. Maybe that should land it in the B tier. I really do love when you do get them to rebloom in your home. I, I, I mine your soft spot for these plants because back when I worked at the bar that I worked at prior to me working at the houseplant store, the owner of the bar, she loved her orchids, but she didn't actually love her orchids because she would buy orchids with the flowers on them and then throw them all out when they stop flowering and replace them all like two or three weeks later whenever the flowers died. So we were throwing out a lot of orchids at the bar and I took home a decent amount, as many as I was able to take home. And I would try to convince my coworkers to take home the flowerless orchids as well. And they usually would. So I had a campaign single-handedly at this bar to save all of the orchids. That makes me want to bump it up to B. You know what, honestly, I think it deserves the D list. It is it is a beautiful house plant. Like I do see them at Trader Joe's every time. I'm like, oh, I should get one for my kitchen counter, but I'm like, I'm just gonna <laughs> just gonna throw it out when it's some flowering because it... yeah. So I'm <laughs> just trying to avoid uh, what I'm just uh, talking shit about this lady who owned the bar. So yeah, let's because of that, let's keep it in B tier. Parlor palm, Camadoria elegans. <sighs> yeah, I think this belongs in the D tier. It's just not exciting and. It's a palm, congratulations. I do like palms, it's just like, do something else than just look like every other palm on planet Earth in a miniature form. Croton, also D tier, like, <clears throat> boo. Beautiful foliage, terrible houseplant. Spider mite city, every, every pest in the book city, by the way. Very poisonous to your pets and drops leaves like no other. 
is a fantastic plant to grow out on the patio or the balcony for the summertime, not a great plant to grow in the home in the wintertime. I did have one for a couple of years that I remember like, I was like, why do everyone hate this plant? And then I had it for a couple of years and I'm like, oh, I completely understand why everyone hates this plant. Uh, Begonia maculata, whitei, or whatever we call it, the, do we have a common name for this? Polka dot begonia? Honestly, don't, angel wing begonia? Polka dot angel wing begonia? I don't know, it all fits. Beautiful house plant. If I could successfully grow it, I think it would belong in the S or A tier, but it is very overrated. So I'm gonna put it in the B tier. As far as begonias go, I'm thrilled that this is one that I feel like single-handedly got begonias to be more on people's radars. They're really not that popular of house plants. This deserves a B tier. I think we could all agree on this. Actually, you guys might think it deserves more than that. Some of you might think it deserves less. That's the whole point of me sharing my opinions today. Calathea White Fusion. D tier. This was the first plant I ever blacklisted when I was the buyer at the plant store. It was a no. If it was on the list, I didn't care how many people asked for it, we'd say go somewhere else to buy it because I'm not getting a tray full of spider mite infested house plants that are literally just going to die on people and they're going to look ugly in our store within like a week. A waste of money. And they were expensive. They were like at least five or six dollars wholesale, which most plants back when I first got started with buying, I don't know how inflation's changed the market, but most plants were around two or three dollars for a four inch plant wholesale but I always remember this at its earliest started at like 550 and only went up from there it was probably like 850 by the time I stopped working there so I they don't even know how people make a profit on this terrible terrible house plan Echeveria um see they don't really do it for me I've grown a couple in my home I've always had really bright light but these just like seem like rock garden plants like something you would have like outside in your rock garden or like around the pool area or like in a little thing on your table on your balcony just like a couple of succulents i don't know to me they're plants for people who don't know about plants so d tier uh yucca i prefer dracaena if it was dracaena like janet craig right here that would probably go up to a tier borderline s tier because i really have a soft spot for that plant i think it's a really excellent house plant for plant styling and i i think the yucca is also great for houseplant styling. It's a little bit more aggressive. It's very upright, it's sharp. It's not my favorite. I prefer the Dracaenas. I think it belongs in the C tier, unfortunately. I wanna, I wanna rank it higher, but I can't put it any higher than the C tier. English Ivy, D tier, because it is another one of those plants just like the Calathea White Fusion, just like Parlor Palms, just like Calathea Ornato or Beauty Star, I guess both of them technically. Uh, these are all plants that I blacklisted when I was the buyer because once again, Spider Mite City never received a tray of English ivies that weren't covered in spider mites. I'm not here to waste people's time and money like that. So yeah, a D tier plant. Aesthetically, S tier. Keeping everything else in mind, D tier. All right, now we have the Makotis Pitola or whatever. I can't remember exactly how to pronounce it. The like lightning bolt jewel, jewel orchid. Stunning, stunning jewel orchid. Uh, I've never grown one of these in my home. My gut's telling me to put it B tier, but I do really love jewel orchids. So it, wants, it makes me want to put it A tier. I feel like this could look just like really stunning, like as a centerpiece on the table, if you have like inside a glass cloche, with like a little bit of moss and like decorations. I just talked it up to A tier. There we go. Pilea peperomioides. Okay, so this was another one of the it plants, just like the Monstera Deliciosa and the Fiddly Fig. Back when I first got my job at the houseplant store, these were everything. They cost like $30 at the time for a four inch pot. Nowadays, you can probably find a four inch pot for less than $10, I think at probably every single houseplant store in existence because they're very easy to propagate. It was only a matter of time and it was a very big learning lesson. In fact, I'm gonna put this up in the A tier because I loved everything we learned from the Pilea peperomioides and I still love it to this day. It is a gorgeous houseplant. I just bought one a month or two ago because I saw it at the, the plant market and I was like, you know what? I haven't had one for a couple of years and you can't tell me that those perfectly round leaves and the fun stalk that grows up and called Pilea peperomioides because it looks like a peperomia. We haven't had any peperomia on this list today, but if there was a peperomia, that would have probably gone in the S tier for me today. So yeah, because of that, I almost want to put it in the S tier, but that's what society wants me to put it as. So I'm going to put it as the A tier. Be a little nonconformist for a second. All right, so we have a Boston or an ostrich fern right here. I can't tell exactly what it is. 
D tier, once again, a beautiful house plant, but then again, Boston and ostrich ferns just give me like porch plants. Like just, you got a covered porch, you probably have a Boston fern out there. So yeah, they're just, they're suburby. It's just not doing it for me. Arrowhead plant, nephitis, no, it's not nephitis. It's like weirdly the common name for it, even though that's the genus of another plant. This per particular variety, D tier. But if we're like talking about like all arrowhead plants, I'm gonna put this in the B tier. This, I wanna, because of this variety, I'm gonna put it down to the C tier. We're gonna, we're gonna call it even for this. So there are varieties of the arrowhead plant that I really enjoy. I, the pink splash one is a little bit overrated, but I, I do like it, I, I will admit that. And the variegated variety, I'm not like a sucker for most variegated houseplants, but that Albo Syngonium is stunning. Keeping that in mind, it's going to keep this out of the D tier. I would never, ever like be enticed to buy one of these, unfortunately. I don't want to sound so rude about it, but yeah, they just, they don't really have anything going for it. In my opinion, this particular variety, if it was a different variety, would rank higher. Venus Flytrap. I love how the D tier is my largest tier, by the way, because uh, the Venus Flytrap is also going in the D tier. <laughs> just not exciting for me. I mean, maybe I should like it because I had like a minor fruit fly problem late summer, early fall going on here in my apartment. So maybe I should have tried one out, but it's like, if I can't even grow you outside of a glass cloche, how are you going to help my fly problem? You're a gimmicky plant. I can't save you from that. So you're going in the D tier. <laughs> Speaking of gimmicky houseplants, we have the Pink Princess philodendron. As badly as I want to just like be rude to this plant and put it in the D tier, I am thinking about how I got my pink princess philodendron in 2017 and I spent $8 on it. Um, I still have it to this day, at least a piece of it. It doesn't look like it used to do. It did at one point look exactly like the plant in this little picture here, but it's just, oh my gosh, the pink princess philodendron, it's, it's, we can all agree it's very overrated. I'm so grateful that it's available in quantity at this point. It was all about like being on the wait list prior to the past couple of years to even consider getting this houseplant and spending hundreds of dollars. It's just not a really good representative of the houseplant community. So uh, I'm gonna put it in the C tier because I think my, the place it has in my heart to me, you know, getting it as one of my first houseplants years ago. I guess I did technically get got by it, but it was $8, so yeah. There's a lot of more words that I could say about this plant. I'm trying to I'm trying to keep it in. So let's just move on to this Oxalis triangularis right here, the purple variety. A really, really cool houseplant. Honestly, I think this houseplant deserves more credit than it receives. It is annoying that it's a plant that goes dormant in like the summertime, I believe. So at the time of year when most of your houseplants are growing, this one's like sleeping. So not the most amazing, but it has a really excellent appearance. It stands out amongst the rest. It's going in the A tier. In fact, I need to get another one of these. when. Spring comes around and St. Patrick's Day is near and these are in all the grocery stores. I'm gonna bring one home. I had one uh, when I lived with my old roommate and her cat loved it like too much. So I had to get rid of it. So I haven't had one since then, but inexpensive, fantastic appearance. It is gimmicky, but I don't care because it's just so fun and it's offering a lot more than like the gimmick of like the Lucky Bamboo and the Venus Flytrap and stuff. So yeah, I'm a fan. Oh my gosh, and we're at our last plant, the Alocasia uh, Amazonica, the African mask elephant ear plant, they call it. I wish it was like a plant that I was gonna rank better. I'm definitely going to, I wanna put this in the D tier so bad but my D tier is huge compared to everything else. I guess it's only one more than the A tier, but yeah, I'm, I'm like, give me a reason to put it in the C tier, but you don't have one. So it's going in the D tier, unfortunately. Just a beautiful houseplant that just really doesn't have anything going for it besides the fact that it's beautiful. I've never had a good time growing these. They get spider mites like that, and I'm sure other pests too. I know I've had thrips problems on these. Never have had this plant look as good as it does when I bring it home from the nursery. And I feel like that's kind of the way I feel about a lot of these plants in the D tier. So I think it truly belongs in the D tier and I don't think I need to elaborate anymore. So that was fun. I always love an excuse to roast some house plants and share my sometimes harsh opinions. And please remember that this was just for fun. So if I did rank your favorite house plant in the D tier, which I feel pretty confident I didn't from the look of all these house plants, I'm sorry. Please just find some fun in this video. I was having fun making it. And if you wanna do this list yourself, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I will leave this exact tier list that I did linked in my description below. So thank you guys for joining me for today's video. I hope you had as much fun watching this as I did making it. If you don't already, you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Philly Foliage. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.